Great. Yeah. yeah. One of the other topics that I wanted to cover with you were drugs and mental health. And, you know, growing up, I had virtually no education on the short term and long term effects of uh, drugs like drugs like marijuana and psilocybin. Could you elaborate mm -hmm. on the short term and long term effects of marijuana, on um, both the body and mind? And also, are there any specific groups of young people who you, whom you would strongly advise uh, against using it recreationally? And then I guess we could cover psilocybin after marijuana. Yeah, great question. Um, so the issue around this, most people know some of the longer term effects of of marijuana can can uh, or cannabis can be um, really around like some cognitive and motivational deficits. So there can be some longer term problems in that area, especially with chronic use. Um, and so I don't want to be like just all negative about it. I think there's obviously some positive elements and people have like creative experiences and there's also the element of just relaxation and that sort of thing. So I don't necessarily think it's like a good or bad thing. I think it's just more like when you overuse a substance, you're going to have some downsides of that. And with cannabis in particular, I think the issue is that, um, you know, motivation can get sapped. So those issues that I brought up, brought out about, um, you know, self-determination theory and intrinsic motivation, um, there is some evidence that, that uh, chronic um, cannabis use can impair um, intrinsic motivation. And that's going to be a problem, right? That could lead to all sorts of, of uh, downsides. Um, the, in terms of whether there are particular populations of people who um, shouldn't be um, using um, cannabis, I would say um, that there is some evidence that, um, that the that heavy use of cannabis can increase the risk of schizophrenia, um, which is surprising because actually that isn't true for psilocybin or LSD, uh, at least the, the large scale studies that are done epidemiologically. It's cannabis in particular that appears to increase the, the base rate risk. Um, and so most people would, most psychiatrists, most psychologists would say, um, if you have a family history of uh, psychosis in your, in your family, uh, the closer relationship, uh, the more that history is there. So if like a parent has schizophrenia or a sibling or um, that sort of thing, you really want to be careful about cannabis use because it could increase risk. It does appear to have some sort of uh, link there, even if it's not huge, it's, it's, it appears to be there. Um, and does marijuana increase the base rate risk for everybody or only people who have a ha family history of schizophrenia? It's debated right now, actually. It's a great question. We don't really have a, um, a good answer to that. It could, it, I think, you know, some, some people believe it's increasing the base rate and some people think it's just in those who have a higher risk. Um, it's hard to tease that apart, right? Because in part, like, for example, in the United States, we don't really have a good, um, uh, a record to follow people and say, oh, you know, Juan, here's your family risk, right? That there's so much uh, concerns around privacy and medical situations that we don't really have that in our country. And so it's, it's a lot of self-report. Um, and so the, the data is a little murky. Um, so most re people recommend, it's kind of like this issue. It's like, basically, if you have a family history, you want to be really careful with it. If you have a family history of psychosis, and even the general population, heavy use of uh, cannabis has all these downstream negative effects, you know, in terms of cognition and motivation. So we want to be careful about that anyways. Uh, it doesn't mean don't use it. It just means, like, be careful with the amount and the frequency. That's what I would think most people want to. You want to think about that regardless of whether you have a risk of psychosis. Even still, you can have some problems in these other areas. And as far as marijuana increasing the base rate um, risk for schizophrenia, is that mm -hmm. through every vehicle through which people consume marijuana, meaning like edibles, vape marijuana, mm -hmm. and just smoking yeah. flour? Great question. Um, I don't think we see a difference in that yet, but that also may be the, the kind of lag that takes place. You know, so a lot of this has to, you know, is epidemiological research that goes over a decade, you know, or two decades mm -hmm. or three decades, right? And so uh, edibles were probably less common not that long ago. And so I don't know if this is going to increase or or, or you know, flat out. And it's not just that, it's also the um, the uh, the relative strength of cannabis as well, right? The THC that's in um, edibles and smoking and, and whether that's gonna increase too. So I think we're kind of in this period of time where we're gonna learn a lot probably in the next, I would say five to 10 years. Mm -hmm.